Welcome back to my channel. For this video, I want to do a book haul for the month of January, which uh, I'm not gonna lie, I went a little bit nuts. This is just some of the pile. There is much more in this giant pile. Plus, I have an unboxing from my new subscription that it's bookcase.club and this is not an ad, but this is a new subscription service that I thought I would try and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so first up is Abarat by Clive Barker. He's a writer, he's done lots of stuff. I have no idea what this is about, but I do know that it's a series. So I thought I should give it a try and see what Clive Barker can come up with. I believe this is a sci-fi or a fantasy world uh, book, so that's right up my alley. So there's that one. The next book that I picked up was The Secret Life of Plants by Peter Tompkins and Christopher Bird. I read a book called The Tangled Tree last year, which was about evolution, and there was a little piece in there that said that the largest organism in the world is a grove of aspen trees that's in Utah because they all have the same root system. It's not multiple trees, it's one, even though it looks like a bunch, and I was super fascinated by that. So I, and I'm kind of fascinated by trees anyway, so I figured this could be an interesting book about plants and our relationships with them, both emotional, spiritual, physical, biological, all those things. So this is one that I picked up because out of sheer curiosity to see what's in here. Next is a book called Molokai, and as one might guess, this book takes place on the island of Molokai as one of the Hawaiian islands. And this is, I don't know a ton about this book, but it sounds like it's a book about a young girl who contracts leprosy, which is what Molokai was known for, for a very long time is as a leper colony. So I thought this could be an interesting book about something both Molokai and leprosy that I know nothing about. That should be an interesting one when I get around to reading that. Next I have The Night Country by Melissa Albert. I read The Hazelwood a couple of years ago. It was one of those books that I just picked up. I had no idea what I was getting into and I came out surprised and a little confused and I'm kind of ready to go down that rabbit hole again. It was probably one of the weirdest fractured fairy tales I've ever read. And so this is the follow-up book to that, and it's such a beautiful cover that I couldn't resist. I'm hoping that this will wrap that up. I believe it's just a duology. I could be wrong. I'm hoping that it will wrap up that story nicely, and we'll see if she can maintain that level of wackiness and story and craft and all that that she had in the Hazelwood. So very much looking forward to this one, The Night Country by Melissa Albert. Next is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. I saw this on a list of best of books and it sounded interesting. This cover of a person exploding from the waist up, I can kind of relate to that. So I thought that was interesting and I believe that this one is about a babysitter who takes charge of these children who spontaneously combust. And that is just weird enough that I need to know what that is about. So, Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. I also picked up, this is an older book, but it's The White Princess by Philippa Gregory. I've never read her work. I've, I'm familiar with it. I know that she's written lots of books. I saw the other Bolin girl, and this one I think is actually also a TV show, which I may have seen if it's the one that I'm thinking of, but I figured I like historical fiction, and she seems like a good place to start with this kind of royal bloodline kind of fictionalization of the British monarchy from back in the day. So this one is one that seemed easy to pick up and we'll see where that goes. This book I am very excited about. This is the, the Book Woman of Troublesome Creek 
by Kim Michelle Richardson. This is one and ever since I picked it up I've seen it on a couple of lists and so it seems like it's getting a little bit of buzz but this was one I I read I don't know relatively recently about the pack library back in the day where these women they were librarians and they would go from town to town on horseback with books because they didn't have a physical library and people were poor and so on and so forth so so they would ride their horses to lend people books so that is one part of this story and the other part of this story is about the blue people of Kentucky and West Virginia which is something I have been fascinated with for a very long time that there are people in very very rural parts of uh, Kentucky and West Virginia that and and I don't really remember it I feel like it's a genetic disorder or something like that where their blood circulation is so poor and their veins are so close to the surface of the skin that they look blue and I have always wanted to write a story about both of Pack Library and the blue people that when I saw that there's one book that combines them both, like, yeah, she beat me to it, but I can't wait to read this book. I am already hooked and I haven't even opened it up to read it. So the, the Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson, this one is going to be read very soon, I can guarantee Next is one called Replica by Lauren Oliver. This is one, I have no idea what this is about. Two girls, two stories, one novel. And this one's really cool because the, there's the story of Lyra, and then on the other sort, side is the story of Gemma. So this is actually two stories. There's, there's the one story, and then when you go to the other half of the story, it flips around. And from what I can tell, this is basically the same story from two points of view, which is such a cool idea. And I love the idea of a um, constructed universe that people have because what I see is not what other people see and vice versa. Like no one can ever live in your shoes. And that's essentially, I think, what this is getting at. And I just love that kind of stuff. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one. And it has the cool cover and the whole thing. So yeah, Replica by Lauren Oliver. Next is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This one is, I believe, a murder mystery that keeps going back in time. And, and that's essentially all I know about it. I don't do a ton of research before I buy books. I just kind of get to the point where I say yay or nay and then I call it good and I either buy it or I don't. So this is one that I have seen a lot of my friends have enjoyed. I've seen it on a lot of lists and it's got a really cool kind of art deco-y cover which <laughs> I'm a sucker for anything with an art deco cover. So this is another one that I think is really cool and I can't wait to read this one. Next is another sci-fi book. This is Recursion. I believe this is kind of a police procedural set in the future. This one also has to do with the concept of memory and memories being fallible. I've seen this on a lot of lists and I've also seen a lot of people reviewing this one that said this book is amazing. I've never read anything by Blake Crouch, but I do believe I have another book by by him that I have on my TBR that is way too long. I'm looking forward to this is one that I'm hoping to get through at some point in 2020. Next is Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. This one I believe is a period piece. Again, it's not one that I know a lot about. I open it up and I see an old timey sort of map of like the docks of Brooklyn. That tells me it's probably a period piece that probably takes place in New York. I'm not sure where the title Manhattan Beach comes from since that's in California. I'm guessing I will find out. I've seen this book kind of floating around for the last several years and people saying that this was really good. I know she's written other books. So I figured I would give it a try and see how this shakes out. I have 
complained in an earlier video that I don't really care for spy novels because they tend to be so like hyper masculine and the women are basically just decorations. So I'm interested to see how a woman, and this is a crime novel, so it's not the same, but I'm interested to see how a woman can kind of flip that script and make a great spy novel while a great crime novel that has the female characters a little more than two dimensions in them. So Manhattan Beach, Jennifer Egan. Next I have one called Fixer Chow. This is one that I just stumbled across. It is about a couple of essentially grifters that are based in LA, I believe. There's a, a writer and just a down on his luck guy and they're both kind of con artists. And so they pull off, according to the synopsis, a con of the century with this feng shui scam, which I think is really interesting because there's so many new age hippy dippy whatever woo woo things that I always wonder how much of that is a scam and how much of it is legit and I'm sure some of it is and that's great but this is kind of an interesting thing this is a Filipino writer so uh, this is an own voices kind of book which I think there is this kind of fetishization of people from Asia whether it's the Philippines or China or Japan or whatever that oh they have this mysticism that we have kind of baked into that identity. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to this. And then I have a book. This is translated from Spanish. This is called Destiny and Desire by Carlos Fuentes. And this is one that I again have no idea what it is about. I did read the little blurb about the author that he was an ambassador, a Mexican ambassador in the 70s. So that's interesting already. The synopsis mentions that there's elements of mysticism and magical realism in it and I'm already hooked. This is a super cool cover of a swan biting a snake and yeah, I how am I not going to read this book? So we'll see how this one shakes out and hopefully this one will be a, a good one. Those are the ones that I picked up. Now to the subscription. This is book, bookcase.club and this is one that it's, they don't send, I don't believe any kind of swag or other stuff. It's just books and it's $9.99 a month plus $5 of shipping and they send you two books a month. It's a mystery box, which I'm cool with mysteries. Obviously, I pick up a lot of things that I don't know what they are, so I'm always willing to take a suggestion of let's try this, so let's see what's inside here. Oh, there's a cute little, little bookmark, and this is very cute, a little hello. So we'll see, what is this? They have different kinds of boxes that you can choose from and I chose two different boxes. I opted for the sci-fi fantasy box and then the general fiction box. I think they have a romance box and maybe a western box and a YA box and you can change it from month to month. You have to make a deadline because they start shipping, but it's kind of cool that you don't, you're not stuck with a box once you choose it. So that's kind of cool. Okay, let's see what's in here. Okay, I believe this must be the fiction box. This one is called Flying at Night by Rebecca L. Brown. I don't know anything about this book, but it's a cute picture with a boy and his dad and his dog, so I'm guessing it's a family drama. It's a gorgeously written book about the raw and sometimes painful messiness of family relationships. So that sounds very interesting. And then the second book is The Weight of an Infinite Sky by Carrie Lesieux. I am not familiar with this one either, but this one takes place in Montana, apparently. That sounds cool. I'm actually planning a trip to Montana later this year for the first time ever. So this should get me in the mood to go to Montana. I'm excited when I read these, then I'll tell you how good they really are. So far, these covers look really 
beautiful. Very different books, and at least I hope they're different. But yeah, we'll see how these work out. On to the next one. Box a number two. All right. So this one is Lamp Black Wolf Gray by Paula Braxton. It says this is the first time in print. Let's see, New Home in the Welsh Mountains, so a British tale. She's an artist, they want a baby. And then there is Merlin. I like a synopsis that ends with, and then there is Merlin. This is kind of a cool little cover. This looks like it's probably more of an adult story rather than a YA, which is fine. I probably don't read enough British authors. I'm working on that. And the other book, it's a nice hardback. Actually, out of the two boxes, only that one book is paperback. So that's really nice to get these beautiful hardback, hardback covers. This one is called Par Paradox Bound by Peter Kleins, author of The Fold and X Heroes. This is a super cool cover, is it not? Like, I like the infinity mobius band with the car on it that's really cool let's see no idea what this is about but at the beginning it says get in the car mr teague the road beckons and that sounds like something that is totally the kind of story that i like to read is one that just kind of goes oh and here it says a steampunked ford model a i approve of this book that concludes my massive January haul. February, I'm going to reel it in a little bit and go to my local library. Uh, I'll still get a box next month. We're going to we're going to pull back so that I can get some of this stuff off my TBR before I read more. So that's the haul for January. I'll be back later with another video and I hope you enjoyed these.